What's up, people? Welcome back. Well, a couple of days ago, I uploaded my latest look at Linux Mint 17 Kiana, the KDE edition. Some of you mentioned that that was a little bit too plain. You prefer uh, Netrunner, which I have taken a look at the latest Netrunner Frontier. I was going to upload that review, but something on the website, their website, the Netrunner magazine, caught my eye. And instead, for this one, let's take a look at that. This is posted by someone named Didomido. Dom Dido I hope I say that right, sir. And it just says, Windows user want to try Linux? Here's a checklist. And I look at this, and of course, me being the, uh, <laughs> the doctor, Dr. Toss, doctor of dual booting for Windows users wanting to try Linux, I thought I would give you my the diagnosis from the good doctor, Dr. Toss. So let's take a look at this. And just to tell you, I liked what I saw. Okay, are you a Windows user who has heard of Linux and is considering trying this new OS? Very good, you have made a very wise decision. Not the test itself, although it may be a pleasant experience, but the very fact that you have opened your mind to new possibilities, I agree. But before you do anything, let me dampen your mojo a little. Your Linux experience will be inversely proportional to your expectations as well as your level of preparedness. Okay, so if you want to test Linux, maybe even move it, move to it one day. You should make sure you approach the adventure with a solid dose of soberness, reality, such as this article. Cool. Okay, oh so typical. For most Windows folks, ta-da, myself, their first and only, their first and often the only experience with Linux can be summed thusly. They have a nerd friend who is all leet and dabbles in Linux. The friend shows them his beautiful free of charge desktop. For the record, the first time I heard of Linux of Ubuntu Linux was in a magazine and not by a friend. Okay. The Windows folks get all excited and want to partake in the experience. The nerd hopefully, hopefully points them to the nearest distro site. They do a bunch of stuff together and eventually Linux is installed. Then the Windows folks realize that this new operating system is so vastly different for what they know and care for. They promptly go back to their old familiar technology. Sometimes they do. Uh, the phenomenon is known as One Night in Bangkok. Wasn't that a movie? All right, he says here, let's try something different then. I won't read all this here. Uh, let's, but this part I will read though, things get even more complicated when you start considering the vast array of Linux options, distributions, flavors, editions, semi-rolling, rolling, blah, blah, blah. I've talked about this before. This can be confusing for new Linux users, but that's why Dr. Toss will unconfuse everything for you. All right. I like, this is my favorite part. To use my favorite analogy, cars, to use my favorite analogy world, cars asking someone to move from Windows to Linux is not the same as driving car A and then switching over to car B. It's more like, <laughs> I love this, learning to drive a moped, then being asked to drive a Sherman tank in reverse, blindfolded, while wearing high heels, two sizes too big for your feet with K. Bush's Weathering Heights blasting in your headset and no AC. Well, I can deal with the no AC. Uh, it is trivial once you get to know it all, but it is a huge stumbling block for most people. And he writes, but all of this can be solved. When someone is determined enough, they will figure out a way. Ta-da, like myself. Yes, they will learn, like myself, and it could take them three or four Fedora installs until things get tight like a tiger. Well, I don't recommend Fedora, at least not yet. Anyway, um, let's see. For free, it's a fair price to pay, especially if you are keen on your exploration and knowledge. After all, throughout the ages, humans have learned new technologies. Okay, the fundamental difference. Uh, the killer thing that we that will stay most people off Linux has nothing to do with the way Linux works per, per se. Oh, I think it has everything to do with the way it works. But that being said, that is meaning, meaningless, he says. What will decide the user's decision to stay with Linux or go back to Windows is how the user experience in the new operating system comes to bear. That is true. If it does, good. If not, it's a failure. Let me elaborate. Let me just say here that the number one thing that irks me as a dual booter 
are bugs when it comes to Linux. The number one thing that irks me in Windows is maintenance. Moving on, people usually use technology with a goal in mind, an end state they want to achieve. They have a need, and when that need is fulfilled, positive emotions converge. Yep. Okay, and then and then there and that's all there is to it. Whether the technology, whatever it is, can make the users happy. If it can, they will master it. There's your big problem. Linux may or may not be able to satisfy the Windows user needs. Understandable. Oh, let's see. This is where some people fail. They blame it on all the wrong things that are completely irrelevant. It's not that GNOME 4 or KDE 7 are better or worse. From the technological perspective, it's not whether the monolithic kernel is superior. It's all about if the technology can make the user feel the way they, they are used to and expect to. I agree that um, having everything work or mostly everything work in Linux the way it does in Windows, that is an expectation for a Windows user. I don't blame them. All right, the holy checklist. This is the bare minimum set of things that a Windows user should consult before attempting Linux. I know this is running a little long, guys, but this is a very good article. If any one of these conditions are met, the attempt will be futile, pointless, a waste of time and nerve, and ultimate disappointment. Yeah, like video drivers. Hardware compatibility. Let's face it, fixing hardware issue is as productive as putting a tourniquet on your neck unless you do it for fun. Ah, uh, new. No. Let's see here. In a live session, you should check all that you can, including wireless, Bluetooth, audio, graphics. Yes, you should definitely. If you don't know what a live session is, if you are new to this, you can uh, run the Linux di distribution, such as Netrunner, or Linux Mint, or Ubuntu, off, off a CD or a DVD. Run it without installing it just to see if you like what you see and just to see if anything works, if mostly everything works or not. So try that. Printing, this is a really big one. Okay, many of you have, ad, have had issues with printing in Linux. Uh, it has a long way to go for everything to work, for all printers to work in Linux. However, I found a solution, guys. Turbo Print for Linux, I've tested this among multiple distributions, multiple print printers. This works all the time. This will solve your printing solution, your printing issues in Linux. It's not free, you have to buy it, but it works. Dr. Toss recommends this. No, I am not being paid by TurboPrint. Uh, I'm not being sponsored by TurboPrint. I'm just telling you for my tests, this works. I'm being sponsored by you guys through donations and advertisements. You guys help promote this channel. I just wanna let you know that, but check out TurboPrint. All right. Smartphone support. Let me just say that in the past, smartphone support in Linux kind of sucked. It's getting better in my new Ubuntu 14.04. seems to work a lot better, actually. Office and Adobe products. I know you guys have had some issues with this. I won't read this. Uh, he says this is a hot one, almost like an atmospheric re-entry vehicle. Good one. Yeah, this is up to you to decide whether you can live without Adobe or not. Games. Okay, this is... This is where I think the future of Linux stands. It is in gaming games for Linux that can be on par for their Windows counterpart. This is where I will do, hope to do gaming reviews in the future, but definitely games is the future for Linux if they get it right. All right, I won't read the rest of this. Here's longevity, longevity and support. Yeah, a lot of distributions, the LTSs give you three to five years long-term support. Um, let me just say here that you can't. He says you can't expect Windows people to abandon their software in ways just because there's something else out there. Their needs. There must be a common need. Um, I would have to agree. So check out the article by Dido Medio again, uh, sir. I hope I said that right. Is it? It is a terrific article, and the good doctor, Doctor Toss, gives his, his diagnosis of this article, and I say check it out. It might be good for you. All right, guys, I'll catch you later.